Hello and welcome to What's New with Cisco U, the monthly series where we tell you the learning insert stuff you should know. This month is all about the CCNA certification. We've got a lot to cover with updates to the CCNA exam, new 2.1 learning path on Cisco U, new product features available inside Cisco U, new tutorials, and so much more. So let's dive in. You've heard there's an update to the CCNA. You're maybe worried, you know, how big is that update? We've been talking about it for a couple of months now. We've had Snack Minute videos and blog posts, and we talked about it at Cisco Live. The good news is it hasn't changed that much. It's, it's what we call a minor update. So we've gone from a 1.0 exam blueprint or exam topics to 1.1, and that new exam goes live, as you can see on the slide, on August 20th. And this is just a nice little summary of those changes, those additions, or or those modifications to the exam topics themselves. So if if, for example, you grab the 1.0 topics and you put them side by side with the 1.1 and you're like, okay, this goes with that. So that hasn't changed. That hasn't changed, right? A lot of people are like, what has changed? So hopefully this slide will, will help you with that. I guess the big one that people were really excited about is that new 6.4, which replaced a, an old item that focused on DNA Center. So first thing is, looks like they took out 6.4, right? It was like, no, we're not going to talk about DNA Center anymore. Well, so one of the reasons around that is because the name has changed, right? It's not DNA Center anymore. It's Catalyst Center. But I think more importantly, what we did is we, we didn't want you to just focus on that solution specifically when you're working on your CCNA. We want you to have a look at other types of device management solutions that are available you know, through Cisco specifically. Things like Meraki, obviously Catalyst Center, um, SD Access, and even SD-WAN. So so by removing that item and then creating a more generic item in the 2.8 where we talk about network device management access and then we added that cloud management at the end, we kind of pick up what you know DNA Center or Catalyst Center was all about um, and including, like I said, some, some content potentially in Meraki and SD-WAN and SD-Access. So 6.4, the one that people have been talking about the most. That's the one where um, we wanted to include a little bit of artificial intelligence, so some AI and some ML in, uh, in the CCNA exam, in the topics. And what I really want you guys to focus on is, is it's not just, oh, let's talk about AI generally, or let's just talk about machine language. It's look, look at the last bit of that sentence, right? It's it's how these two things can get you know, leveraged, used, however you want to put it, within network operations. Some of the stuff that I've seen that I find really, really cool is someone's having a problem with, let's say, some code, right? They've, they've automated something in their network and it's not working properly. It's not doing what they want it to do. And they'll take that and throw it into chat GPT or some other, other tool. And, and the tool will analyze the code, right? That, that, that script, if you like, and let you know maybe where your errors were uh, based on what you were trying to do. So I, I, you know, I love the idea of being able to leverage those tools um, to help you with network operations. We also talk a lot about how Cisco is expanding into that area. So some of our different solutions that include AI, specifically around security, I would say, and again, around Catalyst Center. So all of those management tools that, that we use um, to, to kind of observe what's going on in the network uh, and using AI and ML to help us kind of figure out what those issues are, right? Especially, again, I, I just said it, you know, security, you know, the networks are being attacked from, from all sides, different types of attacks. It's very hard to kind of analyze and kind of comb through all of those. And that's where AI and ML, I think, can really, really help. Last one there, 6.6. .6. You can see that um, we've removed Puppet and Chef, right, from, from the exam. So you shouldn't have specific Puppet and Chef questions. We've added Terraform because it's it's, quite a bit popular, right, in, in the industry. And obviously kept Ansible because that, that's a huge player when it comes to configuration management as well. If you have been studying for the Cisco CCNA exam and you're a little thrown off by the updates or worried that maybe you haven't studied the right material, please keep in mind that this update accounts for less than 10% of the exam. If you have been studying up until this point, you feel really confident about the exam topics and you've put in the work, don't hesitate to book your exam. In order to help you prepare for anything, the CCNA exam now has a backup plan. With CCNA exam safeguard, purchase your CCNA exam through Cisco directly. And in the event of a failed exam, you'll benefit from a retake at no additional cost. The options are between Safeguard and Safeguard Plus, and the only difference is that Safeguard Plus comes with the CCNA practice exam. The CCNA practice exam can be purchased through Cisco U and is also available if you have a Cisco U Essentials or All Access plan. 
Hi, my name is Dallas Garmini, a product manager for Cisco U. And this month we've made some enhancements to our learning path assessments that'll make it even easier for you to reach your goals. Let's go. First off, we wanna keep you on track to finish your study successfully. And we found assessments to be important for your overall learning progress. So when you're in any of the tracks within the learning path, you will see the assessment reminders reminding you to take the pre and post assessments as you uh, navigate through the track. To get an understanding of your knowledge baseline, you can take the pre-assessment before each learning path track. After you finish this assessment, you'll see a summary score report, but you also have access to your full score report showing you your results in each course objective then you can easily go back to any course you want to move on and start that course. Now, after you finish all of the courses in the track and you take your post-assessment, you'll then get a similar summary report for your post-assessment, but you also have access to that uh, post-assessment full score report as well. It is here you'll see your most recent scores and passing score requirements. You could also see how well you've done from each of the course objectives. You'll also have a comparison of your pre and post assessment along with your overall track progress. And so all in all, you will have the option to retake the assessment. You'll be able to go back to a course that you want to spend more time on, or you can navigate to the next track. Hopefully these enhancements will help you reach your learning goals as fast as possible. And that's all for now. See you on Cisco U. We've added some additional content to Cisco U this month to help you in your CCNA studies, implementing and administering Cisco Solution, CCNA version 2.0. This learning path has been updated to cover the introduction of AI and machine learning in network operations. Make sure to check out our most popular free tutorials, especially if you're working towards earning that CCNA. Your first switching show commands for the CCNA, configuring your first ECL. Maybe you're looking into getting to Git with Git for Network Engineers. We've also added a set of brand new tutorials to cover the AI topics on the CCNA, understanding AI and LLMs as a network engineer, making a chat GPT client, chat with your Cisco IOS XC routing table using AI. In addition to all the CCNA content that we've just talked about, we also have three security learning path for all access subscribers implementing secure solutions with virtual private networks, securing email with Cisco email security appliance, and implementing automation for Cisco security solutions. For a full list of the new content available on Cisco U this month, check out the link in the description of this video. And remember, getting into Cisco U is free. Create a Cisco U account, use your Cisco ID, it's that easy. If you enjoyed this video and are enjoying tech content straight from Cisco experts, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Make sure you never miss an upload. I hope you are having a good day wherever you are around the world and happy learning.